this march means justice for all because when we stand up for the vulnerable when we stand up for the least we're representing Christ so that's why I'm here I'm here to bring some light about some dark places all over the globe not just in Philadelphia You were all white. But now look at how this administration is treating your people. Yes. Look at what Trump did when he went there to visit. She was referring to the United States citizens in Puerto Rico because we are United States citizens, President Donald Trump. We are a proud people with much dignity. We have fought far too long for our rights with little to no voice or no voice at all. We are hardworking, dedicated, and professional. We know very well who we are and what we are. We also know we are the ones considered to be the brown people. Yes. We're not brown people, we're Latinos yes. from Puerto Rico. Yes. yes! We know very well how legislation and regulations have been placed upon us to restrict our own economic growth. Legislation such as the Impose Jones Act, which has forced us to accumulate a debt of over $75 billion. On September, September 5th, 2017, Hurricane Irma, a Category 4 with winds of 115 miles per hour, and 15 days later, not even recovering from Irma, Hurricane Maria, a Category 5 of winds of 155 miles per hour, struck with full force our island of Puerto Rico, Vieques, Culebra, and the Virgin Islands, all of which are territories of the United States of America. Yes. In Puerto Rico, these storms have completely devastated the island by making landfall just south of Yabucoa. More than 1.5 million people still remain without light. The bridges and roads were, were torn, flooded, and demolished by rivers and oceans that roared through the communities. Torrential rain and powerful winds ripped the roofs off the homes and the structures. Many have been left homeless or living in dilapidated structures. Businesses have lost all sorts of making revenue. Animals have lost their families and now are astray on broken streets living in hunger. In the Virgin Islands, approximately 100,000 have no drinkable water, no power, and no cell phone service. Many places are just a pile of rubber and some look like bomb sites. The territory has been obviously and agnostiously overlooked by the administration. Although Vice President Mike Pence vows, vowed that the White House would be there through the entire process of recovery, but has not kept his promise. As of December 8th, 
in Puerto Rico, do you know what the death toll is? The real number is 1,052 people. In the Virgin Islands, it's 30. The administration says it's only 64. That number keeps rising. Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands have become a large legislation and economical argument within the administration and legislative branches. Senator Bernie Sanders introduced a legislation entitled the Puerto Rico and U.S. Virgin Islands Equitable Rebuild Act of 2017, which would forgive Puerto Rico's debt and install a new electrical grid that could withstand future hurricanes, all of which has been read twice in Senate and now referred to the Committee on Finance, and yet no avail. <laughs> Terribly, I agree. The administration has removed all their uh, assistance, leaving, leaving many people vulnerable and inaccessible by roads to die. Inaccessible because our homes are built on cliffs, on mountains. And these people cannot come down from those mountains. And we need to find ways to get to them so that we can provide them with food and medical supplies and whatever else they need. But we need this administration to stop playing That's the right. political games right. that they play That's with right. not only Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands, but also here on the mainland. Yes. They play too many political yes. games. Yes. People on the island are still in need of food supplies, medical supplies, electricity, and clean water. More people will continue to die. President Trump, more people will continue to die unless you stop playing these games. Many have evacuated to the mainland. Many are here in Pennsylvania and in New Jersey. I and my daughter, Crystal Carabello, have serviced many of these families that have evacuated here because what are you staying in Puerto Rico for? What are you staying in the Virgin Islands for? You, you lost your home. You lost everything. You have to survive for your child, for your elderly parent, and for yourself. So a lot of them are here, and we have to help them here. What is happening on these islands by the White House, the President, and the administration is pure racism. And until racism is truly and honestly addressed, Head on, no one, no one will truly have equality here or there. I want to thank my friend Helen from New York for giving me that comment that I read in the beginning of my speech. Because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have shaken my head and my first reaction, and I'm gonna tell all the blacks and Latinas here, our first reaction is defensive. We cannot always be so defensive. We have to listen because my black friend told me look in the mirror. And not because I think I'm white, I'm black and I'm proud of it. I'm black and I'm proud of it. Yo soy negra jibara de Puerto Rico. And I'm proud of it. We have to work together to stop all the racism, to stop all the hatred that seems to have been coming out since his campaign started. It has to stop. We resist. As women, we must never allow the momentum of this Women's March to fade away and allow the administration to believe they are doing the right thing for the people here and all over the world. Resist the constant demonstration of lack of leadership. We persist. As women, we have the power and numbers to make the change. Look at all the women here. Look at all the women on Facebook that are watching us now. Women can bring about the much needed help for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Persist in demanding policy be implemented to better the quality of life for all, regardless race, religion, color, 
or financial background. We rise. The voices of all women, regardless of race, nationwide, must continue to rise louder above the devastating hardship we face daily, forced upon us by the White House administration, Senate, Congress, and society itself. Rise together to witness positive outcomes of our struggles. I love you, Philadelphia! Different mentality today. It seems hard. It seems it seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. Is a challenge. Um, um, so so I'm ready. I'm ready for this challenge. And I was built. I was built for this. I think that I think we all have a purpose, have a purpose in life. And mine's and mine's is going to take on a task that most that most of uh, back away back from, away from that impossible. That impossible. So people, people say it's impossible. I see possibilities. I don't see I don't see anything as being impossible. impossible.